Joining us now is the national correspondent for Air America Radio and contributor to the Daily Beast, Anna Marie Cox. Anna Marie, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Again, always, always, always good to be here, Rachel. <laughs> uh, Gary Sinise 2012, does that say a lot about Gary Sinise or a lot about the Republican Party or both? I think it says a lot about the Republican Party because as far as I know, although Gary Sinise is reportedly a conservative, uh, he hasn't actually made a stand on any particular issue except for supporting the troops, which, you know, I don't think that's partisan. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure we all support the troops. And actually, I mean, I do admire him. He, has a, he does USO tours all the time, and uh, that's fantastic. It's not really a resume builder for presidency. It has been um, fun to watch John McCain's inner circle since the presidential campaign ended. I mean, campaign managers... It was Steve fun to watch them during the campaign, Rachel. Exactly, which is why I wanted to talk to you about this, because you, you, you reported on the campaign, you knew, knew all these guys, but since the campaign is over, I mean, we all know what John McCain is doing every day, but Steve Schmidt is criticizing the Republican Party on social issues, coming out for gay marriage. Meghan McCain criticizing the party for being too homogenously right-wing. Nicole Wallace promoting Gary Sinise for president. Are they trying to tell the party something? I think that they are, but I also think it's really interesting that they're doing all these things publicly and not privately. Hmm. Uh, I don't. McCain has never had a very good relationship with the party um, as a, as an institution, and I think he's sort of proud of that. I think those of us that that like him as a politician. That's one of the reasons we like him. And the people that were on his campaign had that same conflicted relationship, although I think Nicole, having worked in the Bush White House, probably was a little less conflicted about it. Uh, I think that the fact that they're going public about it suggests that perhaps they don't think that their counsel would be paid attention to if they just took it to someone privately. Hmm. Um, and also I think what they've decided is that, you know, I know having talked to Steve a lot about this, is that if the party decides to turn his, their back on him, he's okay with that. Um, he feels like he's made a decision. He knows what he thinks the party should do. Um, if, if, if the people in charge disagree, well then fine. And I think that there's something really admirable about that. And I also think it's true that if the Republican Party doesn't listen to these people, they, they, they are in trouble. You and I both know that. Hmm. You were at the um, White House Correspondents' Dinner this weekend. I know because <laughs> I saw the picture of you and Tom Cruise. Um, <laughs> Everybody the did. The one with me and Ed Westwick was actually, oh, and also Orsag. I know, Orsag with the bow tie. So cute. I know. Did he have the um, thing in his pocket with the behind the... The, the dual berries? Yes. I totally felt his berries. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that on television. <laughs> All right. Um, I know that you talked to Michael Steele as well because you were spotted. How did Michael Steele feel about um, getting, the, getting joked about by the president? Well, I think he actually took it in very good humor. Um, I, he gave me his business card, which I think speaks to an enormous amount of optimism on his part, that he had business cards printed. Mm. Uh, who knows how many, but, <laughs> you know, some. Uh, and also, what was interesting about talking to him is he seemed to acknowledge that it was there was a different... Temp uh, I think the word I, I would probably use is temperament between him and, and the core group of people that form uh, the Republican you know, National um, Committee. I think that he's struggling uh, just a little bit. I don't think I, I, ha I needed to have talked to him to tell you that, um, that he's struggling just a little bit to try and figure out um, what he wants to do versus what um, the people that are in the party that feel like what the, me the, the people that, are, that run the RNC feel like the problem is that they didn't have an attractive enough messenger right? Mm -hmm. They feel like the problem is the messenger. They feel like they need Gary Sinise. I think that, that some people, and I, I would hope that Michael Steele is one of them, realize that the problem is not the messenger. The problem is that the message, that Americans are, do not want to hear the party of no right now. Um, briefly, even though we're out of time, do you, feel, do you feel like he thinks he's getting pushed out of the party? No. 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 No, I think that I think he believes in the Republican Party, um, and I think he should. It, it, there is actually, as I'm sure you know, you're a history person yourself. There's a grand tradition to that party. Um, there's a role that conservatism should play in American culture and politics. And I hope that there are people that want to actually like do something about that and not just stamp their feet in wine. Well, there's always Gary Sinise. National correspondent for Air America Radio, contributor to the Daily Beast, Anna Marie Cox, as always, thank you. Thank you.